Okay, so we've made it to chapter seven now, trigonometric identities and equations. And today we're gonna to talk about equivalent trigonometric functions. Now chapter seven, um, I have to warn you right now, this is always the chapter that students find the most difficult. So spend the time to figure it out. It's not impossible, nothing is. And I'm sure you can all do it if you just follow along. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is what is an equivalent trigonometric function if I've, give, I've been given the graph of a function. So as we've discussed in previous sections, if you look at this function, you can see we talked about um, negative sine functions. So if I went from here and I go down and then I go up, let's say these are all heights of one. So it'll just be a regular sine function, no, no stretch. Um, no vertical or horizontal stretch because the period is two pi. So if I wanted to identify this function with an equation, I can say, well, if I start here and I'm going down, then this is just a negative sine function. So I could call it y equals negative sine theta. Now you could give me another sine function. Let's say I wanted to start my function here because, wow, this, this is a perfect sine function from here to here. This would be from negative pi to pi. So I could say it's um, sine of theta and I've shifted it to the left. So it's gone pi units to the left. So I could say this is sine theta plus pi. Okay, so that's, that's the very same equation. Now, if I asked you, uh, give me another sine function. Well, let's go to Let's say it started here and it went down and then we go back down here and back up. So we would start it here. So this is sine theta shifted to the right pi. So I would say sine of theta minus pi. Okay, so those are all the sine functions. Now I could give you all kinds of sine functions. If I just kept going here, I could say, um, I could add two pi to any of these and I could just keep going, right? Because a sine function, unless I've been given a restriction on the domain, is a continuous function that just keeps going and going and going. It's like the ever ready money. Okay, so let's look at some cos equations. We can give it some cosine function equations, couldn't we? Um, so cos, if it starts from the peak here, so let's say this one to this one, this would be a cosine function that's been shifted to the left minus pi over two. So I could call that y equals cos theta. So I went to the left, so I'm going to add pi over two. That's one. Can you give me a negative cosine function? y equals negative cos. So negative cos, remember, is from um, the lowest point to a lowest point. So I could start it here. And if I kept this going to here, that would be a negative cos function shifted to the right, pi over two. So I could say negative cos of theta minus pi over two. So these are all equivalent expressions to describe this function. And unless you've been told which function your teacher wants you to give them, all of these are proper and correct solutions to the equation for this function. So sometimes a teacher might say, well, give me a negative sine function. I want it to be a sine function with a shift, a horizontal shift or a cos function. Okay, so that's what we mean by equivalent trigonometric functions for these graphs. Okay, now the second thing we're going to look at is another way of describing um, trig functions, uh, similar trig functions. So we're going to look at just theta so theta is going to be just an acute angle, so from here to here. And how do I describe the sine, cos, and tan when I go into another quadrant? So in quadrant one, everything is fine, right? I'd say sine theta, um, cos theta, tan theta. These are all the trig ratios of theta in that quadrant. And that, those are all, all good and fine. But if I go into quadrant two, and I said, so what's this angle from here to here, this big angle? And I want you to tell me 
how would I describe it in terms of pi and theta? So when I'm in this quadrant here, the sine of theta, sine of theta is equal to, now we would say pi, if I wanted to know how far this was, I'd say it's pi minus theta, right? So the sine, I'm just going to change this here because I didn't want to say it that way. The sine of pi minus theta, pi minus theta, and when I'm in this quadrant, it's the same as the sine of theta, right? Because sine is positive in that quadrant. What would be the cos of pi minus theta? So if I'm here, the only thing that's positive in this quadrant is sine. So the cos of pi minus theta is the negative cos of theta. Are you understanding? I hope so. And what about the tan? So the tan of pi minus theta. So in other words, I'm just describing this angle from here to here into the second quadrant. This would be equal to the negative tan of theta. So these are all equivalent expressions. And again, you have to know all the different ones and how they how it works. You don't have to memorize this, just use your head. Okay, so let's go into the third quadrant. I'm going to use purple here. So if I went all the way around to here, how would you describe that angle in terms of pi and theta? Well, I would go to pi and I would add the acute angle of theta. So here, just remember theta is an acute angle. And remember acute just means less than 90 degrees. So the sine of pi plus theta, so if I go here and I add theta, I'm in this quadrant, so that's going to be the negative sine of theta. And what about the cos? The cos of pi plus theta. Well, cos in this quadrant would be negative, so it's going to be the negative cos of theta. Now, if you don't believe me, and I'm sure you do, but if you don't, you can just do, do a value. Let's say um, theta was 30 degrees. So I would have the cos of theta. And when I'm in this quadrant, the cos of, um, let's just use degrees to make it easy. So let's say I had 180 minus 30. So what's the cos of 100, and, uh, sorry, the sine of 150 degrees? And you will get a positive answer, right? So let's just take a look at that. Just to show you that I'm not telling you any lies. The sine of 150 degrees is 0.5. So that's the same as the neg as the sine of 30 degrees. Right? So if I do the sine of 30, you already know that one is 0.5. So what's the cos of 150 degrees? So the cos of 150 degrees is going to be negative. So it's the negative cos of 30 degrees. Because watch when I do cos of 30. I get the very same answer, but I have the positive of it. So it's just showing you, it's actually just demonstrating, once again, the cast rule, isn't it? Okay, so the tan of pi plus theta is going to be the negative tan. Whoops, no it's not. When I'm in this quadrant, pi plus theta is the tan of theta. I'm trying to go too fast here. Thought maybe I'd made, spent too much time. Okay, and let's go to the last quadrant. So in quadrant four, the sine of, now how are we going to describe that in terms of pi and theta? So if I'm going, let's get another color here. If I go all the way around to here, pen died on me. Okay, so if I go all the way to there, that's going to be 2 pi minus theta. Right, if I be 2 pi minus theta will give me this angle. So the sine of 2 pi minus theta, that's going to be equal to, well, in this quadrant, only C is positive. So that'll be negative sine theta. The cos of 2 pi minus theta. So cos of 2 pi minus theta, well, that's just going to be the cos of theta. So these are all just all the different ways you can write the identities. So the tan of 2 pi minus theta will be the negative tan of theta. 
So basically you just need to use your head a little bit to see where you are, what quadrant you are, relating it to 2 pi pi and the acute angle theta. Okay? So let's go on to something that's a little trickier and something you hadn't seen before, which are co-function identities. So a co-function identity describes the trig relationship between the complementary angles theta and pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, complementary. What are they talking about here? Let's take a look at this triangle right here. If I call this angle up here theta, and this is 90 degrees, then this has to be pi over 2 minus theta. Right? So in other words, if this was 90 degrees and this is 30, this is going to be 60. If this was 90 and this was 45, this would be 45. If this was 90 and this was 20, this would be 70, 90 minus 20. Okay, so let's go back to radians. First, we're going to label our triangle properly here by giving the side lengths the letters in lowercase, opposite the angles. Remember all that. Okay, so if I asked you, what is the sine of theta here? Well, sine of theta, so opposite over hypotenuse, would be A over B. Okay, just I know you're going to say, but we just used X's and Y's and R's. Why are we using A's and B's? Just hang on. The cos of theta, cos is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. That's C over B. And the tan of theta, opposite over adjacent, or A over C. Okay, now let's go over to the other angle here, down here, which is pi over 2 minus theta. Notice we're talking about pi over 2 here. That's going to identify to you we're talking about a co-function. 90 degrees, pi over 2. Okay, what's the sine of pi over 2 minus theta? You'd say opposite over hypotenuse is C over B. And the cos of pi over 2, the that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's going to give me A over B. And the tan of pi over 2 minus theta, tan opposite over adjacent, which is C over A. Okay, so if you look at the ratios that I have here, you're going to see that the cos of C over B for theta is related to this one, right? The sine of pi over 2 and the cos. So these are what we call co-functions. They're co-functions. And the sine and the cos, look, A over B, A over B, like this. And the tan of A over C, this doesn't make the same thing, right? It's A over C. But what is the same is that the tan of pi over 2, if we did the cotan of pi over 2 minus theta, we would have A over C. So that means that we have the, the sine and the cosine, the cos and the sine. So sine goes to cos, cos goes to sine, and tan goes to cotangent. Okay, I will bring that one way over here. So those are the cofunction identities. Now, how does that all work? Let's... Um, I think I'm just going to bring in another piece of paper here in a second here if I can find one quickly. Because I want to show you one that will make a little sense of all that again. And let's take a look at one of your exact value functions. And that will be the 60-30. So this is 60 degrees here, so that's pi over 3. This is going to be pi over 6. This is 90 degrees. So remember the special triangle, um, we have a length of 2, 1, and square root of 3. So if I said, what is the cos of pi over 6? Pi over 6. Okay, cos is root 3 over 2, right? Root 3 over 2. So if I'm using cofunctions, it means the cos of pi over 6 is the same as the sine of pi over 3 in this case, right? Sine of pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Okay, so let's do the 30 degree one. Let's say, what's the sine of pi over 3? And you'd say a half. And what's the cos of pi over 6? Cos of pi over 6. 
cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. What am I doing? Cos of pi over 3. That's wrong. It's the cos of pi over uh, The sine of pi over 6. Yeah, I always get those mixed up because I'm thinking 30 degrees 60 and I see a 3 in the bottom. It's the other way around. So the sine of 30 degrees is a half. And the cos of, we've got to switch them here. So the cos of pi over 3, cos of pi over 3 is a half as well. So note that this is dealing with 30 and 60. They add up to 90, and that's where we get the co-functions. So let's take a look at some of the questions you would be asked in your homework assignment. Ooh, I really brought a lot of paper. Okay, so the question would be, using a co-function, describe the cos of pi over 6 as a co-function identity. You say, ooh, co-function. So we know that the cos... The cos of pi over 6 goes to the sine of the one that's pi over 2 minus that angle, right? So you go cos to sine, cos goes to sine. So I'm going to write it like this first. The cos of theta is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus theta. Cos goes to the sine, and it's the difference between 90 degrees, right? Because like 60, 30, 30, 60, 45, 45, 20, 70. So if I have the cos of pi over 6, that's going to be equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus pi over 6. Now you could probably do this without doing this step. I think some of you will probably just think about, oh, how do I get to 90 from pi over 6? So if you can't do it, you can change this. This is the same thing as 3 pi over 6 is pi over 2 minus pi over 6. And that gives me 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3, which is what we said over here earlier. So the pi, cos of pi over 6, that's 30, this is 60. This is going to be the sine of 60. So let's try another one here. Let's say what's the tan of pi over 3 is equal to the cotan. Tan goes to cotan. Tan goes to cotan. Sine goes to cos. Cos goes to sine. So it's equal to the cotan of pi over 2 minus pi over 3. And that would be the cotangent of um, you'd have to make a common denominator. So let's let's go to 6. So 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6. Changing both denominators to 6. So that's the cotangent of pi over 6.